Hey guys, uh, we're in the middle once again of our Italian infantry harness project and a question we wanted to address that doesn't often get shown in the armoring process is where do you even start when it comes to making armor? I mean oftentimes you see the process get started or if you're a beginner like I was you start with a pattern that you found online and then you kick off with the hammering and all the shiny and hop stuff. But where do the patterns come from and how do we get from museum originals to something in real life like this that's a formed piece of steel. First up, where do the originals even come from? Originals is the basis upon which an armourer interprets and starts their projects to build from. There's lots of different kinds of original sources we can choose from. The best you can do is to get hands on with the original in a museum. For those of us who can't get overseas like myself here in Australia making armour, we have to rely upon photographs of the original pieces. You can source those from museums like the Metropolitan Museum of Art and several other museums that provide really great high quality images. Pinterest is another great place to look for those. There's a bunch of different collectors and enthusiasts that have great boards with all of the original sources you could possibly ever want to choose from. A few other sources that we can rely upon are artworks like this one, uh, wood carvings and paintings from the period depicting armour. Those require a little bit more interpretation, so not as good as original sources, but still very good. Also, we have statues, and uh, this here is the Reliquary of Charles the Bold, which is like a tomb monument uh, for this particular Duke from history, who's slightly important for our uh, call to arms context and our infantry harness project. We'll more about that in the main series. One of the challenges we run into with photographs of original sources is that they're two-dimensional guys. See, armour itself is a three-dimensional object. It has curvature, taper, proportionality, all kinds of things going in all different directions. The only way to get a good read of that is to actually handle it in person. The best we can do with photographs is to wish, pray, and beg the gods of armour that the photographers take the perspectives from the sides and from key axial angles, either from the front or from the side, as I was saying. Why is that important? That enables myself or another armourer to copy and follow by eye the trajectory that we can see, the, the depth that we see in the piece from the side, and we can get our proportions. Like in this example of this manifold that I'm raising, I'm going to be looking at the width of the cuff to the width of the wrist to the width of the metacarpal. Those kind of proportions is what defines the functionality and the aesthetic of the armour. Really critical. In fact, most of the work of armouring is actually blending between these profile perspectives. Your geometry and the structure you define by copying the originals is fundamental to the overall look and function of the armour. Well now that we have our originals, how do we get about interpreting them? Taking taking these sources and then projecting that onto steel or getting it to a space where we can actually start forming that into an armour. There's two main approaches that I like to um, look at when coming to making armour. One is the patterning approach and the other is what I would say is a more historical approach to armouring and that is the sculpting mindset. First with the patterning approach. Essentially, for most beginners, you start out with patterns as I mentioned earlier. Now, you can either buy those from armourers or you can source them from people that are supplying them or hopefully find them somewhere on the internet. But a way that you can make your own patterns from originals is to basically craft and sculpt that in paper. What the heck does that even mean? These patterns that I developed from these gauntlets that we're using in our gauntlet making series, essentially I just started with a piece of paper, wrapped that around my hand as a cone and started drawing on to that piece of paper what I saw in the original. Really important thing that guides your mind when interpreting original sources, measurements. Armour is made to sculpt the human body. So your anatomy is a guide to what shape and what distances need to go into that armour. Using anatomy and the measurements of the body and using the original sources, you can, by trial and error, work a pattern until you find something that works the way that you need to fit the human body the way that it functions. That can be a long and time consuming process um, and quite technical and you need to know a little bit about armour often to actually do that. But it's certainly one approach. 
You can see that I've used that approach here to make the cup of the gauntlet. Here's the paper version of that, and here's the version directly in steel. The advantages of this particular approach to patterning and interpretation of our sources is that it requires less work. If you're trying to capture the shape in the pattern and then do whatever work is required to get the shape, which is very different from our second method and approach. Second method and approach is more of a sculpting approach to armoring. And an example of that is the Manifa piece in a pair of gauntlets. Italian gauntlets, the left hand is made out of one piece where the hand and the cup are all connected. And we start out with a piece kind of like this. You can see this is basically a cone of steel. Yeah, there's some taper here and there's some cutouts at the front from the pattern that I've refined, but more or less you could start with the tube. The armorer then uses their mind looking at the original source and using the heat and the hammer to raise that shape and you're thinking, you want to think like a sculptor. You're working like a stonemason, like a clay sculptor. You're looking at the original source and you're putting that shape into the steel. To do that, we reference the proportions and the angles that I mentioned earlier to get our depth and you're constantly going between the anvil and the torch and comparing your work to the original back and forth between the two to get the shape that you need in your piece. Once you've got that shape, you can actually generate a pattern from the steel itself. Now you've got a three-dimensional object, you can wrap tape or paper around this piece to generate a pattern that you can then replicate using the previous method. Historical armourers most likely worked from the knowledge that they had in their minds. Instead of using patterns like we do in modern times with dresses and in making manufactured parts, the original armourers were artisans, trained as apprentices over many, many years to hone their craft. When an apprentice started his trade to the end of his uh, apprenticeship, he would have stored in his mind the three-dimensional models of all the armourers in that master's workshop. And so the pattern, if you will, is not in paper, it's in the mind of the craftsman. And that's really what defines a real professional armourer, is the mindset to be able to take a piece of steel and transform that into something incredibly complex, suited to the human anatomy and functional and beautiful, just from the memory that's stored in the mind. One of the problems you can come across with just starting with a pattern you've found is, does that pattern actually translate to the sizing that your body and your anatomy requires? The human body uh, has key points of functionality to it, and since armor is designed to work with the human body, you really need to understand those distances to make the armor fit the body. That's the whole reason that armor is often custom made, or is essential to be custom made for it to function well. Here's an example. This gauntlet that we're working on, there's some key dimensions to this that are gonna make all the difference as to whether it fits your hand or not. The distance, for example, between the knuckles and the wrist. That distance is gonna translate directly to the distance between the knuckle on the gauntlet and the wrist on the gauntlet. If that distance is too long or too short, it's not gonna articulate at the right place on the hand and that's going to cause all kinds of problems. So in some ways generating your own patterns or understanding how to work from the originals to a design makes a huge difference in being able to actually get a piece that's going to work as opposed to something that looks potentially great but doesn't fit you at all. If your brain's hurting after all that information, that's all right. The whole process of being able to take an original source and interpret that and then turn that into armor is incredibly tedious at times and takes a lot of brain sweat. And I know that it's taken me quite a long time to learn and I'm still learning this process. I'm nowhere near the master of it and there's much for me to still understand about how to pattern and make armor, which is all about the fun of the journey. However, don't be discouraged if all of this seems overwhelming. The best way to start is just to find patterns that already exist and get started from there. The more you get experience of making armor, the more that's going to help you in making patterns. And the more you understand making patterns, the better you're going to get at interpreting the sources and so on and so forth. In summary, what we've talked about today is what we use to make armor from, the original sources, where to get them from, some of the things to think about with those original sources, 
And then two main methods for us to approach actually interpreting those originals and turning them into armour. One was pattern making and the other one was to sculpt that shape in the steel and then create patterns from there. We also talked about the armourer's mindset. At the end of the day guys, if you're in the game and you're practicing and you're trying out armour, you're on your journey to becoming an armourer. Stick at it, just keep learning, love the journey. Till next time, Iron Crown Workshop, signing off.